the Vortex Strike Eagle 3 at 18 by 44 right now on Pirate Firearms and Reloading. Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. So today we're talking about um, one of my favorite sort of budget friendly scopes. So Vortex, love them or hate them, um, I've, I've never had an issue with the product. Um, I own quite a few Vortex optics, um, from red dots to, to three different scopes. Obviously this one you see in front of me, and I also own two Strike Eagle 1 to 8s. Um, one on my go-to 22 for pest control, and um, one on my bush hunting rifle. I've covered that in another video if you want to go back and have a look at that. Um, I go a little bit into the scope, but not really. Um, so this is purely going to be about the scope. So, out of the box, with typical Vortex stuff, you get really nice packaging. Um, you know, Strike Eagle is not their premier line, but it's still really good stuff. So you get these really nice rubber um, tethered caps. Um, and to give you an idea too, they're actually numbered on the inside their dimensions. So you know that that outside objective bell is 51.2 millimeters. Um, so it is a by 44, obviously you've got metal around the lens making up that difference. You get a removable um, throw lever for your magnification adjustment. Um, you get a generic microfibery cloth, you can see it's still in the packet because I haven't used it. Um, you get this quite nifty little um, scope tool here. So the um, hex or allen head does the um, detachable throw lever and the metal piece around the side here that allows you to unscrew your turrets. Uh, a coin will work in the cap too. A um, little bit of a departure from some of the other brands out there that actually have a toolless um, resettable turret. Really, once you've got your load dialed in and you're happy with you know shooting the rifle, you shouldn't need to change that a whole lot. So that's a good one to note. Um, and hiding behind the pirate logo, we have a screw on sunshade. Honestly, this thing makes the scope massive by the time you screw it on to the end. So I've never used it. I'm not a massive sunshade guy. The interesting thing I do note is there is actually front threads in the sunshade. So if you wanted to look like a clown on the range, you could get more of these and just keep going. Um, I guess the idea is you could then put a like a honeycomb kill flash still in there. So a um, couple of things that make this scope unique over some of the other lines. Um, you do have a locking elevation turret and on the far side, sorry about the angle, the way my studio is set up, um, slash workbench, the windage turret is capped. Um, and that's the second point where your little vortex tool comes in. That is, goes in there for resetting your windage um, turret. So I'm somebody who dials for elevation, usually holds for windage because we'll get varying winds throughout a day. Um, even throughout a 10 minute period, it can go from blowing really, really hard to almost nothing. Um, so it's really nice to have that capped out of the way. You know nothing can happen to it. Now that's something that is unique in the Strike Eagle line um, for the three to 18. The five to 25 has a locking turret for the windage. Um, some things to note about the Strike Eagle line, they do tend to have larger tubes. So the one to eight is on a 30 mil tube. I mean, that's kind of the standard these days, but typically your low power variables, if you go back to the 90s, 2000s, they were mainly on a one inch tube. Granted, those were one to four magnification most of the time. So this scope is on a 34 millimeter tube. So a little bit harder to find rings, um, but I've chosen the Spur um, ideal scope mounting system two-piece. Um, they obviously do the one-piece, um, which I'll do another video on when I do a video on another scope, coincidentally. Um, immensely, immensely impressed with these rings. Um, rings do make or break a scope, quite literally. Um, bad rings will break a scope. Bad rings will also come loose and you can have the best scope in the world. If it's loose, it's not going to help you. So really, really happy with the spur setup. 
As you can see, I do have the level on the side. Um, on my one-piece mount, I've got a diving board and a red dot um, on my 6.5 Creedmoor. Um, that's the Tech Attack A1 you've seen on the channel. But this is my 308, and so a 3 to 18 is, is actually really quite nice. I do plan on getting a 5 to 25 later on for another rifle. It may even end up that I put the 3 to 18 here on that other rifle and put a 5 to 25 on this. Um, this is not a rifle I'm going to be carrying around. It's a little bit heavy to do that. Um, so I'm not really worried about the weight of the scope. And that's the other thing about the Strike Eagle line. They tend to be a little bit heavier. Um, that's obviously where they cut out some of the cost of these rifle scopes. They're a little heavier, a little bulkier, a few less features, but all around still a fantastic scope. Um, I was a little bit worried about the glass quality. I purchased the 1 to 8 quite a number of years ago, and as most people are aware, at a lower magnification, glass quality is not as critical. When you start getting up into you know the teens and things like that, that's when glass quality really starts to show. Um, the Strike Eagle has been fantastic. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best glass in the world. Um, you know, you can obviously go and spend a whole lot more money on a, you know, a Zeiss or a Smitten Bender or a Swarovski or um, the Eotech Voodoo Night Force, all those good brands, and, and get fantastic quality glass. This is very good for what the price point is. So um, I definitely prefer the um, lever on because the adjustment to the magnification is fairly stiff on these scopes. Um, my one to eights are about the same, fairly stiff. Um, something else to mention too, you do have a parallax adjustment. That parallax adjustment, also very stiff, but you do have very aggressive grip on it. Goes right down to 10 yards. So if you were thinking about using this scope on a rim fire um, that you might also shoot out further, perfectly capable of doing that. Um, and of course it goes out to 500, then infinity. So that's, I mean, for me, parallax on a rifle I'm gonna use for target shooting is a must. Um, if I'm hunting, eh, not so worried unless it's longer range hunting. But, you know, in a, in a scope like this, I would expect to see a parallax adjustment at this point. You also have an illumination for the reticle in here. Um, 11 levels of brightness. Once again, your little Vortex tool allows you to take the cap on and off, okay? Um, and that just takes a 2032 off the top of my head. It could be wrong. The other thing to note is, thankfully, Vortex have dialed this in. Beautiful tactile clicks. Beautiful tactile clicks when you come to adjust your turrets. Snaps back in place really, really nicely. 10 mils per revolution. Thank you, Vortex. I don't understand why other manufacturers play around with odd numbers. Drives me insane. Um, the other thing, hopefully you can see it here on the turrets. You also have, for example, here, 3 and 13. On the second revolution, obviously, that will be a 13. So it's nice just to have it in a bracket there. Hopefully, you should be counting when you're dialing very accurately, but it's still nice to have that there, just as a friendly reminder, hey, yes, it is 10, 10 mils per revolution. So now we're gonna talk about the zero stop system in this, and Vortex call it a rev stop. Effectively, what it is is a rev limiter. So when you follow their instructions and set it up as per their recommendation, what you get is 0.5 below zero, and you come to a very, very hard stop, all right? And then you get, in my case, 18.9 mils of elevation before you come to another very hard stop again. Um, I have played around with it. You can use that 0.5 that's below to allow you to push up a little bit further. Um, I think what I'll do once I've got this finally dialed in and my load developed. This is the problem with having too many firearms. You're forever chasing load developments on different things. You never actually get to complete anything. Um, I'll probably set it up so it comes to a hard stop, um, maybe at 19 mils. Um, so then I'll have 0.4 
below zero and come up to a hard 19. I would have loved to have got 20 out of it to have a nice round number, but that's the way the rev stop system works. And I'm gonna take the cap off now to show you what I mean. So, as you'd expect with Vortex, everything's got O-rings on it. That not only keeps moisture out, but it also stops this guy backing off as well. And we lift our turret off nice and gently. And you can see this ring here, right? And if I just give this a wiggle upwards, this is the rev stop ring, okay? And you can see there's like a groove in there. And then over here, there's actually a, like a stop in the groove. What that indexes on is this little pin here at the back of the scope turret. So what the idea is, you snap this guy down. And once again, there's a little O-ring in here, which helps retain this. You push it down. And then there's even an arrow on it. You rotate till it stops. Okay. It's literally that easy, guys. And then you take your turret and get it back in the zero position. Now, like I said, it will go five below. So if you actually click that down in a slightly different position, that will tune what your final number is. We push that turret back down. And screw the cap on. just like that, we lift that turret up, we should be able to dial 5, 0.5 below, sorry, back to zero, or, or 18.9 up. Now, if you've got a rifle shooting a big heavy projectile, kind of like this, that 18.9 may or may not be enough. At the end of the day, you don't have to put that rev stop, um, zero stop limiter in there. You can just leave it out. Um, really, I couldn't be happier with the scope. Um, the final thing to talk about is the reticle. So it's a EBR7C. Um, this is obviously first focal plane, and it is a MRAD or mil um, reticle, as well as mil turrets. Um, you can get them in MOA as well. I'm trying to shift out of the MOA game and move into mills. Makes more sense. Here in New Zealand, we use metric. So mills is easier to equate um, when you're talking measurements. The other thing is a lot of your like wind formulas and things like that all come back to mills rather than MOA. Not the end of the world. It just comes down to personal preference. It's nice to see that still offer both options getting a lot of scope manufacturers out there now who only offer one option really good to see so it is a christmas tree style reticle and you see it popping up on the screen um, it does have windage dots which is really nice like I, like I said earlier i tend to dial elevation provided i've got the time if i've got to make a quick shot then no obviously so the windage dots really do come in in that aspect i do quite like that the reticle stops and you have a, a floating dot in the center for your um, zero main point of aim it is quite nice and it happens that a lot of the times you'll find that dot's just a touch smaller than the circular plate you're shooting or the circular target you're shooting and you can actually have like a nice little silhouette ring around the outside of it something about the human eyes um, you always put a circle inside a circle roughly in the center that's just how everyone's brain works that's why um, iron sights with a rear aperture people tend to shoot better than a buckhorn sight really really nice overall scope i am over the moon for the price point i don't think there's a better scope on the market um so thanks for watching people if you haven't subscribed please do so really helps me out on the channel give it a like share it with your friends and if you've got any questions hit me up in the comments down below um, but hands down vortex strike eagle 3 to 18 by 44 value for money you cannot go wrong happy shooting thanks for watching don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you don't miss out on anything and if you found this video helpful 
please share it with your friends. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Catch you next time.